In the previous video, we learned about the nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions of acid chlorides. Anhydrides are nearly as reactive as acid chlorides in these reactions. They too can be attacked by negative or neutral nucleophiles. However, in practice, it is much more common for anhydrides to react with neutral nucleophiles, such as water, alcohols, or amines. An anhydride could be treated with a negative nucleophile. The nucleophiles attack on one of the two carbonyl carbons will push that carbonyl's pi bonding electrons onto oxygen as a lone pair, thereby forming a tetrahedral intermediate. Recall that the name for this intermediate stems from the fact that the sp2 hybridized or trigonal planar carbonyl carbon rehybridizes during nucleophilic attack to become sp3 hybridized or tetrahedral. In the next step of the mechanism, the carbonyl reforms as the tetrahedral intermediate collapses. And during this process, the best leaving group, the carboxylate, is displaced from the incipient carbonyl. The result is the nucleophilic acyl substitution product. And a carboxylate has been expelled as a byproduct. While anhydrides certainly can react with negative nucleophiles, their most common reactions involve neutral nucleophiles. And when a neutral nucleophile is used, the reaction also begins with the attack of the nucleophile on one of the two carbonyl carbons. That carbonyl's pi bonding electrons are pushed onto oxygen as a lone pair forming a tetrahedral intermediate. The tetrahedral intermediate then collapses to reform the carbonyl pi bond. And as this occurs, the best leaving group is displaced. The carboxylate is a very good leaving group, so it will usually be displaced. Lastly, a proton is lost so as to afford a neutral product. This is the result of nucleophilic acyl substitution, and in this case, the byproduct is a carboxylic acid. As we saw in the previous video with acid chlorides, there are several possible nucleophiles that can react in this process. Let's take a look at some of the options for anhydrides. While we could consider the reaction of an anhydride with chloride, it turns out that this reaction actually fails. Chloride is a negative nucleophile, and as a result, it can attack the carbonyl carbon to form a tetrahedral intermediate. However, when the tetrahedral intermediate collapses, the best leaving group is displaced. And in this instance, chloride is a better leaving group than the carboxylate. So it is ejected from the molecule to reform the original anhydride. So there has been no net change as a result of this process. To better understand why this reaction failed, we need to know why chloride is a better leaving group than the carboxylate. And to understand that, we can compare the pKa values for their conjugate acids. The pKa of hydrochloric acid is approximately negative 7, whereas the pKa of a carboxylic acid is in the neighborhood of 5. Consequently, HCl is the stronger acid. Since both of these acid-base reactions 
simply involve the loss of a proton. The difference in acidity must be due to the difference in stability of the conjugate bases. Since HCl is more acidic, its conjugate base, chloride, must be the more stable conjugate base. Now here's the significance of this comparison. Once we have identified that chloride is more stable than a carboxylate, this fact can be applied to any reaction, and it therefore explains why chloride was expelled in the preceding reaction rather than the carboxylate. Chloride is the more stable entity, and therefore it made for a better leaving group. Let's now turn our attention to the reaction of anhydrides with water. While the reaction with chloride failed, many other reactions of anhydrides with nucleophiles will be successful. For instance, anhydrides can be treated with water to form carboxylic acids. Water is a neutral nucleophile. It begins the reaction by attacking one of the two carbonyl carbons of the anhydride. Pi bonding electrons are pushed onto oxygen as a result, and a tetrahedral intermediate is formed. When this tetrahedral intermediate collapses, the carboxylate is displaced. This forms an oxonium ion as well as the carboxylate. Finally, the transfer of a proton results in two carboxylic acids. If the anhydride used was symmetrical, then two equivalents of the same carboxylic acid product are produced. However, if the anhydride substrate was unsymmetrical, then two different carboxylic acids will be formed. In this reaction, you may also sometimes see a second water molecule being used as the base that removes the proton in the final step of the mechanism. When this happens, the products are a carboxylic acid, a carboxylate, and the hydronium ion. Although this may appear to result in a different outcome, it is important to keep in mind that when a carboxylic acid is produced in water, some of it dissociates so as to create the carboxylate and the hydronium ion. Consequently, both ways of drawing the final step actually have the same outcome. To understand why this reaction was successful, as opposed to the reaction with chloride that failed, we can examine the leaving groups on the carbonyl carbon of the reactant and the product. The carboxylate leaving group on the reactant is a better leaving group than hydroxide, which is the leaving group on the product's carbonyl carbon. Therefore, the anhydride is more reactive then the carboxylic acid toward nucleophilic acyl substitution, and the products are consequently favored at equilibrium. The reaction of an anhydride with an alcohol is similar to its reaction with water. The alcohol can also serve as a neutral nucleophile attacking one of the two carbonyl carbons of the anhydride. Pi electrons are displaced to result in the formation of a transient tetrahedral intermediate. The reformation of the carbonyl during the next step of the mechanism is accompanied by the loss of carboxylate. 
This gives an oxonium ion as well as the expelled carboxylate. Finally, a proton is lost, and the proton may be lost to either the carboxylate or a second molecule of alcohol. Ultimately, in either instance, the product of interest is an ester. This reaction's success can also be rationalized by comparing the leaving groups on the reactant and product carbonyls. This reaction was successful because the carboxylate is a better leaving group than an alkoxide, which is the leaving group on the product's carbonyl carbon. Since the anhydride has the better leaving group, it is more reactive in nucleophilic acyl substitution and equilibrium favors the products. Finally, anhydrides can also react with amines. More broadly, they can react with ammonia, primary amines, or secondary amines. In all cases, amides will be formed as the product. A primary amine is used in the generic example shown here. It attacks one of the two carbonyl carbons of the anhydride, pushing pi electrons onto oxygen, forming yet another transient tetrahedral intermediate. The collapse of this tetrahedral intermediate occurs concurrently with the loss of the carboxylate leaving group. Finally, a proton is lost so as to form a neutral amide as the ultimate product of this reaction. Much as with acid chlorides, this reaction requires two equivalents of amine. One equivalent is incorporated into the desired amide product. The other equivalent of amine is sacrificed to acid-base reaction with the acid produced during this transformation. However, if the amine is expensive or difficult to prepare, one equivalent of the amine can be used along with one equivalent of pyridine. Pyridine is a non-nucleophilic base that simply reacts with the acid liberated as the reaction progresses, thereby freeing the amine to react with the anhydride and generate the desired amide product. Yet again, it is leaving group ability that justifies the success of the reaction. This reaction worked well because the carboxylate is a better leaving group than that found on the amide. Since the anhydride possesses the better leaving group, it is more reactive in nucleophilic acyl substitution, and as a result, equilibrium favors the products. It's worthwhile to make a final note on mechanistic variations that you may encounter. As with acid chloride reactions, the order of dissociation of the leaving group and loss of a proton can be reversed. Different texts will use different ordering of these two mechanistic steps. When the order is reversed, the reaction still begins in the exact same way. In other words, the amine attacks one of the two carbonyl carbons of the anhydride, and a tetrahedral intermediate is still formed as the pi electrons are moved on to oxygen. The difference occurs in the next mechanistic step, where instead of encountering 
collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate, we instead see loss of a proton from the ammonium ion. This neutralizes its charge. Finally, in the last mechanistic step, this is where we will now encounter the collapse of the tetrahedral intermediate and the expulsion of the better leaving group, which is the carboxylate. The final reaction product is still the amide. Therefore, the net result of the reaction is still the same. This is merely a subtle variation in the presentation of the mechanism. Symmetrical anhydrides are typically preferred to unsymmetrical ones. This is because when symmetrical anhydrides are used, attack at either carbonyl carbon will generate the same reaction product. But if an unsymmetrical anhydride is used instead, then regiochemistry becomes an issue and multiple products may result. This is typically undesirable because a mixture of products is harder to deal with in the laboratory than a single product would be. In summary, anhydrides are reactive in a variety of nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. They can react with water to yield carboxylic acids, or they can react with alcohols to yield esters. On the other hand, the reaction of anhydrides with amines yields amides. However, the acid produced during this process must be trapped by either a second sacrificial equivalent of the amine or by an equivalent of a non-nucleophilic base such as pyridine. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, then you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.